What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today I'm going to show you how to make a giant seven segment display to track your YouTube subscriber count in real time. Let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, if you want to learn how to make awesome 3D printing and electronics projects, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my new videos. Most of you already know this, but I only recently started doing this YouTube thing. When you're new to YouTube and you don't have many subscribers, it's incredibly exciting when someone new subscribes to your channel. And if your goal is to get monetized by YouTube, then you need to reach 1,000 subscribers to do that. Sure, you can check your channel analytics every day and see how close you are to being monetized, but why do that when you can just look up at your wall and see a live feed of your subscriber count in real time? Plus, my workshop is in desperate need of more lighting, so hopefully this helps to brighten things up a bit. Oh, and I should mention, I'm gonna make it Alexa compatible too. So without further ado, let's get into the details of the build. For the brains of this project, I'm using an ESP32 dev module, which is a low cost microcontroller with onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It operates at 3.3 volts with an input voltage between seven and 12 volts. To light the segments, I'm using a strip of WS2811 LEDs that run off of 12 volts and can be cut into sections of three LEDs. These sections of three LEDs ended up being the perfect length for a segment on my displays. Since the LED strip needs 12 volts, I selected a 12 volt 5 amp power supply off of Amazon, as well as some buck converters to regulate the 12 volts down a little bit for my ESP module. Like I mentioned before, the ESP module can run off of anything between seven and 12 volts, but I've had a regulator overheat and burn out from 12 volts before, so I decided to step the input voltage down a little bit just to be safe. To get started, download the project from my GitHub repository and open it in the Arduino IDE. From the sketch dropdown, select Show Sketch Folder to open up the location of the project on your computer. Next, copy the credentials example file to a file just called credentials.h. To get this file to show in the Arduino IDE, close the project window and reopen the project. With the project back open, set the connection settings in the credentials.h tab by setting the SSID to your Wi-Fi's name and enter the password. Next, follow the instructions in the README for this project on GitHub to set up a new project in the Google Developer Console and create a new API key for the YouTube counter to use. Once you have the new API key, enter it in the credentials file and set the channel ID that you wanna get data for. The last thing to configure before uploading this to our ESP32 is the number of digits you have. In the main project file, set the num digits variable to however many digits you plan on making and save the project. Now, before we can upload this to the board, we need to configure a few things within the Arduino IDE. To do this, go to Arduino Preferences and enter this URL into the additional board manager URLs section. If you have other URLs listed here already, you can separate them with a comma. Once you've entered the new URL, click the OK button and go to Tools, Board, Boards Manager. Here you'll need to search for ESP32 and install the one by Espressive Systems. Once that installation is completed, go back to Tools, Board, and select ESP32 Dev Module. Most of the settings that show up should be okay the way they are, but we're going to have to select the port that the board is connected to. If you don't see your board in the list, then you may need to install the USB to UART bridge driver from Silicon Labs. To do that, go to the link in the description and download the file corresponding to your operating system. Run the installation and restart the Arduino IDE. Now when you return to Tools Port, you should see an option for SLAB USB to UART in the dropdown. With the port selected, make sure the programmer is set to AVR ISP Mark II, and you should now be able to compile a project and upload it to your board. To make sure the credentials are working, keep the board connected to your computer and open up a serial monitor. The script will check the channel stats every 10 seconds and output to the serial monitor. I would recommend changing that interval though, because you shouldn't need to update your subscriber count that often. To change it, 
set the API MTBS variable to the number of milliseconds you want to wait. I just set mine to check once every minute. If everything seems to be working the way you want it, then you can go ahead and get started on assembling the electronics. To start, I printed out all of the parts to make all four digits. Each digit is made up from a black base, a white layer to diffuse the LEDs, and another black layer to separate each of the segments on the LED a little bit better. The white diffusers have small tabs that fit into slots on the digit bases to allow for easy assembly and disassembly. With everything printed out, I started cutting the LED strip into sections of three LEDs and started sticking them into their spots on the base of the digit. The adhesive on the back should be enough to keep them in place, but you can always use some super glue to reinforce them. I arranged them in an S pattern so that I could chain several digits together and set the segments on each digit easily. Once the LEDs were in place, I got started soldering them together following that same S pattern I just mentioned, and I added a little bit of extra wire to the beginning and end of the strip so that I could connect the digits together, making one continuous string of LEDs. With that done, I finished assembling each digit by sticking the black piece onto the white diffuser and then mounting the diffuser portion onto the black base. With all of the digits built, I started working on assembling the brains of the project. To do this, I grabbed some perf board and mounted some female header pins to it so I can easily replace the ESP32 module if something happens to it. Like I mentioned before, the LEDs run off of 12 volts, but I'm going to use a buck converter to bring the voltage down to around 7 volts for the ESP32. I connected the VIN and ground on the ESP32 to the output of the buck converter and connected the 12 volt input to two pins on the screw terminal. I then connected pin 26 on the ESP32 to the center pin on the screw terminal. The last thing I did to the main circuit board was add one section of LEDs so that I could light up a little YouTube play button that the electronics would be encased in. I wired that LED section up to the 12 volts and then the data pin to pin 27 on the ESP32. With that done, I was ready to mount the perf board into the YouTube play button I designed. All that's left now is to mount all of the components onto the wall connect all the digits together, connect the first digit to the controller, and plug it in. If everything boots up correctly, then you can have your Alexa scan for new devices so you can turn it on and off by saying, Alexa, turn on the subscription counter. And that's it. And that's it. That's how to create a giant seven segment display to use as a YouTube subscription counter. Now I don't have to sign into my YouTube studio to see how many amazing viewers I have subscribed to my channel. On that note, help me fill out the rest of these digits by clicking that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Also be sure to smash that like button and let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video or if you have any video ideas for me to make. If you're interested in making your own subscription counter or you just want to make a giant seven segment display, be sure to check the description for links to all the parts I use for this build. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.